Hi, everybody. Every once in a while, there's a little bit of a short break. Um, we want to make sure everybody is joining us. Um, but happy Monday. I think the um, Bengals might have been just a little bit ahead of their time because um, it's just another manic Monday. Might be a little bit more appropriate these days, right? I um, hope everybody's doing okay working from home and um, teaching from home. I know that your students are loving it because I have um, grandchildren who love to hear from their teachers. So just on behalf of all the students out there, thank you so, so much for all you're doing. Um, don't worry about Manic Monday though, because today we have um, just the remedy. My guest today is um, Virginia art educator, Cheryl Neal. And Cheryl has just the thing to fix a Manic Monday. Welcome, Cheryl. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful today, Chris. How are you? I am also so well. I am super duper excited. So on Friday nights, the Virginia Art Education Association has started a public Facebook group called um, the VAEA Forum. And they do Friday night forums where they invite one of their own to come and do an hour long making session, a, a creating session. And so Cheryl was the first and I missed it, but I was invited to the second one and I'm addicted. Like the VAEA peeps are my Friday night date and I love them. And so I went back and um, did the recorded version of the live session and got 100% hooked. On top of that, I knew that NASCO was doing these webinars and so I was super excited because today is lines galore and Cheryl's just is like the next level, the, the higher version, the elevated version, and you are going to love it so, so much. So um, Susie Belzer is the one who created um, lines galore for us. And this is the project guide. Um, the project guides partner with the actual lesson plan. The lesson plan is going to give you the full directions. It's going to give you the original materials. And I say original because the project guides are designed for students to be able to do these at home. Um, crayons, oops, crayons, watercolors, things like that. In the original line design, it used um, black ink. You can see mine's actually used because um, I do love to make. Um, and the marker dauber. And so it's really fun and it's big on watercolor paper and the students just have a really great time with the lines. Here is sort of the version on um, a little bit lightweight paper. Um, you could do it on copy paper. You could actually do it on a newspaper and just have that um, interesting design in the background as well. So um, yeah, so today was lines galore. And then after the video, we're gonna have Cheryl present on um, the next level, which is neurographic art. You're just gonna love it so much. So Cheryl, I'm gonna let you um, get ready and we'll get ready for the video. Um, if you wanna practice making while you watch the video, just you can start practice doing some lines, but absolutely get your Sharpie and your paper ready for when Cheryl demonstrates because you're going to want to make right along with her. So here is um, lines galore and enjoy the student version of the lesson plan. Hi, I'm Chris Bakke, Customer Engagement Manager for NASCO Education. This is lines galore. It is a NASCO Artworks lesson plan. In fact, it's volume 116. So that tells you how many we have out there. This one was developed by Susie Belzer. And when we say developed, we know that there's tons of ideas out there that have been done lots and lots of times. So nobody claims original authorship. What they do claim is that they have written this lesson plan for their classroom utilizing these supplies in, in this order. And this is sort of the outcome. What we want though, is we want this to be like a building block for you in terms of giving it to a student and having them create uh, something similar 
but also making it their own and it's a great way to also integrate other subject matters line school or is going to teach about line and pattern and possibly rhythm so that would really marry up to like math um, when you add color in there you could probably even throw some science in there but I feel like this is a really great one to talk about um, the principles of art and design to talk a little bit about design and and how you go about that method and then lines in general so we are going to write it so that a student can follow but as you assign this to students make sure that you give them some freedom to make it their own and be a little bit creative with it so start off with having um, students practice line and here i just did a whole page of different lines i would even maybe suggest that they name the line so that they get used to all the different kinds of lines and let's be honest lines can be almost anything but there's definitely some basic ideas to that so start with that next you're going to in this particular situation you're going to i was using just regular art supplies um, i would say basic art supplies susie had used india ink on here but not everybody's going to have that on hand i used yellow crayon and started with putting a wide variety of lines that go from one side to the other or at least intersect with another line and stop at a certain point but it's a great way to again add math in there and talk about intersections and geometric shapes and organic shapes so once they have created that part then next is going to be adding texture and pattern which is actually super fun too you could do it completely monochromatic i chose a wide variety of colors and a wide variety of textures and shapes once it's filled up you're going to start adding the color watercolor lends itself perfect to the crayon because it resists and i put red on top of the red pattern purple on top of the purple pattern and on and on and once it's all filled up the student's going to have a glorious piece of artwork and i realize my artwork is very elementary this could easily be elementary middle school if you assign it to um, a higher level you're going to have a higher expectation of what they do and maybe um, some additional research that goes with it maybe you're going to have them write a poem and then um, mount the poem and use this as a background maybe you're going to have them just do some research on the math of line and intersection and shape but whatever you do just make sure that you um, let your student have some fun and use the four c's with creativity collaboration communication and critical thinking and enjoy the lines galore lesson plan so much fun it is such a great way for kids to explore line and begin um, practice making their marks and using their creative brains and speaking of brains let's go to cheryl um, um cheryl are you ready i'm all set up and ready to go yes you can start we are excited everybody get to making i'm going to make right along with you guys okay so for neurographic art there are not a lot of rules for it other than the fact that when you make some lines to start you're going to travel from one edge of the page to the opposite edge or well to one of the other edges it doesn't even have to be to the opposite edge so I'm going to start at one edge and I'm just going to take my line for a walk. Let it go across the page. So it started on one edge, stopped on one edge. I'm going to do this a couple of times to fill up some pattern on my page. And again, just start and stop on an edge because you don't want things stopping in the middle of the paper. I'm going to go and add a little bit right there. That's a pretty good design to start with. We're going to keep it simple for this first one. Once you have your lines on the page, then you wanna start thinking about adding in some shapes. So you can add in some circles, some ovals, squares, or triangles. The only thing I will tell you is that um, 
when you're adding triangles or squares or anything that comes to a point, you want those points to be softer. So I'm actually going to use squares today. They're one of my favorite shapes. So you can see that when I make my squares, I kind of round out my corners so that way there's no hard point because if I did have a hard point, I would have to go back and deal with it later. You can put a shape within a shape. So I'm just going to add some squares across my page to build up some pattern. Fill in some of the spaces here. You want to kind of look at composition. You don't want too much or too many things in one little space, but you want to make sure that there's enough interest to hold your eye as it moves throughout the painting or drawing. I think of them almost as paintings because once you start doing um, the last decorative step, they can become quite interesting paintings. So Maybe one more there. That's my final design. Once you have your shapes on top of the lines that you started with, you're gonna go in and you're gonna do what we call a transformation. And we're gonna get rid of all these intersections where lines overlap each other. So I usually try and start in one part of the page and move around. So anywhere where two lines intersect, I'm gonna add a curve, just soften it. If I have a closed shape like I have here, I can just go and make a circle inside of it and that'll soften it out. But everywhere where these lines meet, I'm gonna soften that line and carry it out. Now, I carry mine out usually across an entire shape because I don't like the little lines that happen when you have start and stop points. So usually I'll wrap around like that and then you can fill in those corners. You have to do both the interior and the exterior points. So where that line intersects here, I need to do the inside as well. So again, it helps to do those shapes where you just kind of outline it with the soft edge and start filling it out. So you would go through and do all of your intersecting points like so, curving them out, making sure that you're getting rid of all those hard edges. This design has a much different feel than all of these intersecting points over here. So you're gonna keep going through. Again, just kind of softening out your lines. You will go through some Sharpies, um, especially if you press hard. Now, you notice that I just colored in that little shape. If you end up with small shapes in between lots of lines, sometimes it's better just to color them in rather than trying to create the soft shape inside of them. So you want to keep going. Now, I would keep doing this over and over until I have all of my shapes taken from the hard edges to the soft edges. I actually have one ready that I'm going to slide in here so you can see the next step. So we'll pretend that I got all of that done and this is the shape I'm done with. Now you can see with this one I use circles instead of the squares, but with this one, all my shapes are filled in. I've softened all those edges and you get what actually starts to mimic or look like the neurons that you would see if you took a picture of the electric pulses that go through your brain that help your brain actually create and do. So that's part of where the name comes from. It also is, um, a type of artwork that is used in art therapy to help people make connections and stronger designs within their brains. You can see I'm going through here and picking up these last little pieces. So once you have your design done, now you can go and you can decide if there's anything else that is needed. I have a design that I like to add to my pieces and I'll usually look for some place where I can divide another space up. So I'm gonna do this. Now, automatically, as soon as I add that new line, I've got new intersections that I have to curve out. So you wanna make sure you do that first. And then I like to do what creates this like bar looking design. So I'll go and add lines across the space. And they don't have to be perfect. And then you'll notice I'm going to switch to my ultra fine point Sharpie because it's a little bit easier to do tiny spaces, but I'm going to go in and just kind of round out the corners. So we're going to 
And sometimes if you make a mistake or you don't actually get it quite rounded, you just go back and fix it because nobody's going to know. The whole point of this process is that it is very relaxing. Um, part of why Chris says that, you know, this will help with Manic Mondays. I find it to be almost um, meditative when I'm working on it. I can kind of zone out and lose an entire day just making these beautiful marks and designs. Um, so you go through, add in. This is the point where you can go in and add any other pattern. If you had an area like over here where you think something needs to be added, you can go back. Let's say I'm going to add another circle in here. So I'm going to take my circle, put it in here. Now, because that circle is touching one of the other previous black lines, I've got to do the same thing. I've got to curve out and soften that edge. And again, I take mine all the way around because I don't like the little partial lines. So there's that. And then I may actually even decide that, you know what, I want a second one right here. And then I'll go and add, clean it up a little bit. Again, there's no right or wrong, which is part of the beauty of these designs. You make a mistake, there's no such thing. You just add to it, modify it, keep going past it. So I would keep going. If this is where I'm at and I'm pretty happy with it, let me go back and finish this edge real quick. So I got so excited to show you adding the additional circles in, I forgot to finish this. Now, the beauty of this is if I do forget to finish one, no harm, no foul. I've had one that I had finished. I had actually taken pictures of it, uploaded it into my PowerPoint design, and I noticed that there was a spot that I had missed. So what did I do? I went back with my Sharpie, colored the spot in, took a new picture, uploaded it, was good to go. So once you have any design choices made like this where you've added in pattern or detail, I might do a little bit more. Um, I want something to balance out this piece that I'm working on. So I could take this shape here and I'm going to kind of cut it off here, curve out the edges. So now I have a piece that's kind of balancing out what's happening there. I'm going to go in and add my lines here. And then again, I use my ultra fine Sharpie sometimes for doing these corners because it's easier, especially on these ones where I do these tiny little shapes. It's just a little bit easier to go in with the ultra fine. Now, if your Sharpie is brand new, your regular Sharpie is brand new. Of course, it has that nice tip on it, and you could still go ahead and use that. Go ahead here, finish this up. And then this technically is, this is neurographic art. You don't have to do anything else to it. You've completed the plan. And I will tell you, normally when I'm doing this, I don't talk. Normally I'm sitting there working and just really focused on my artwork. So this is almost a new challenge for me today to actually do it and have to talk at the same time. Even though I've done a couple of these, still a challenge every time. So now my piece is done. However, I love color and I love to play with my markers and see how I can make them do different things. So usually when I do a piece of neurographic art, it can stay black and white like this. And you can see I brought in some other examples that I have. So these designs work completely on their own as black and white designs. However, they're also fun when you start to add in color. So I brought a couple of samples. You can see I really love this black heavy line that I add. It's become one of my signature pieces that if you see a lot of my neurographic art, you'll see it pop in there but they're very cool and organic, lots of organic lines, patterns galore. I love how this one, you almost have two different pictures happening within it, so there's that. However, when you take these beautiful drawings and you start adding marker to them, a whole new world of possibility opens. 
So you can see here on this one, I've added lots of bright neon colors, some pinks, purples, oranges, yellows, and greens. And then I've added actually other drawings on top. So I'll show you one more real quick. This one, I just colored it in solidly. I didn't even play around with what the markers are capable of doing. I colored every section in with a different color and then went back with a white gel pen and started drawing patterns on top. So before I get too far ahead of myself, one of my favorite things to do is to take a marker and use it like it is a watercolor brush. So I'm gonna take my color and I'm gonna add some color in a shape. And I don't have to add a lot of it. I could kind of outline the entire shape. Doesn't have to be neat or pretty either because what you can do is take something like I have a water pen. Um, so this actually allows water to come out. It's a clear um, paintbrush and I can take it, add it to the marker and then it starts to make your marker act like it is watercolor paint and it'll allow you to blend it and bleed it out. Take it and use it to fill in the shape. It gives you a really nice soft transition of color. And it creates this almost bubbled effect because, you know, light moves around a shape and it around an object and it will get lighter on top, darker on the edges. That's almost what this does. So what I might do is take that same color and decide I'm going to do all the sections of this circle because what is this circle reminding me of? I don't know, maybe a radish beet. But I'm going to go ahead and same thing, add the water, let that bleed out. And again, it creates that beautiful soft transition effect, gives you that nice bright pop around the edges. And move on over here. Keep going around. Again, part of what I love about this is I don't have to be perfectly neat and tidy, which is not always fun because that causes stress. So this allows me to be very free flowing and organic. And you'll notice that I turn my artwork around a lot while I'm working on it. That's because I'm left-handed and I have a tendency to drag my hand through all of my artwork. So to any lefties out there, shifting your artwork around helps a lot. Keeps your hand from going through it. So there's that. I'm going to finish out this, these other two tiny sections. And then... Once I have those painted in, I've decided that rather than having this whole circle be that, I'm going to put a pop of a different color in here. So I'm going to take this dark yellowish, uh, kind of a yellow ochre color and use it. You'll see I don't have a paper towel handy, so I actually clean my brush out on my hand. <laughs> and then I can go ahead and Go in here and start playing around with the water on top of the yellowish color and do that and keep going across the entire page, playing with color, mixing it up. You want to play with contrast and letting your colors pop off next to each other. So next to that bright red, I might do a darker purple color. Again, traveling around the edge. Notice on this one, I did not do the entire shape. I just did one long edge because I want to just use what's in that shape and let it fade off to almost nothing. So that way my color starts on one side of the shape and goes across, but it gets lighter and lighter as it goes across. So it fades off to nothingness. You can have lots of fun with these, especially once you start playing with colors and patterns. When I did my first video live, well, my live demonstration, not a video, um, 
it was interesting because at the end of the night, everybody posted their pictures so that I could see them. And it was amazing to see everybody else's take on the project because people started going back and doing other things to theirs. This one that I showed you before, this one happened because somebody else showed me to take the white pen and go back and start drawing on top and actually adding patterns. So I went ahead and did that. I also saw somebody who showed me how to go back in and start playing with lines and patterns with your black Sharpies on top of your color once it's done. So there are an endless possibility with these. And this one again, lots of that color washed out bright and then adding some white marker pen on top of that as well. And then the last one that I'm gonna show you, I actually did one where I had a different thought process with it. I actually wanted to make this one look like something very specific, but I wanted to keep that same style of a neurographic design. So I went ahead and created a DNA double helix model, which is what all of our DNA, our body is made up of. And I went ahead and created one, added in lots of the dots and the patterns and made the lines move around it, painted the background in black so that the double helix would really stand out and then did some watercolor washing on top of that. So it's a beautiful thing because it can be very loose and abstract, like some of these designs are, or you can actually take it and turn it into something more specific. So there are hundreds and hundreds of possibilities. You can do this over and over again and never get bored. Um, every single one will be different and everyone will be unique. So other than that, that's really the whole process. I'll turn it back to Chris. So if we have any questions, we can work on that. I can answer questions. <clears throat> And you can, and Cheryl, you can flip your screen up so we can see your beautiful face because, <laughs> wow, that was, I was so excited because I have been playing around with this. And just for the record, this is what mine looked like. And I'm super excited because the first time I watched your video, I missed that you can, you can have a, add some lines right in, <clears throat> excuse me, you can add some lines right in and they don't have to be off the page. Right. That added a whole different look. I mean, it, it's unreal how what you can do with it. And so, um, so I did, I'll show you my very first one after I did Cheryl's. And so I didn't have any um, watercolor markers at home or markers that would lend itself well to doing that sort of watercolor look. So I just started using some watercolors. I happen to be using Faber-Castell watercolors. Um, and I'm just going to make sure to be cognizant of the question. Nancy asked, what, what's it called again? It's neurographic art. Cheryl, tell us a little bit about how you even heard of it to begin with. So about a year ago, I was playing on Pinterest and looking through it and came across a piece of artwork and I was like, oh, the look of that is absolutely gorgeous. How was that done? So I started digging around online and just um, doing an image search. So I put in that image to look for something that was similar to it. And um, I came upon an artist out of Brooklyn, New York, who um, does neurographic art. She does it more from the therapy part of it though. Yeah. So um, I was able to watch some of her videos and to see what she does and started researching what the whole idea is. Again, I don't do it as art therapy. I just took the idea and ran with it because it was so much fun. So yeah. I took the art therapy part and kind of pulled it apart and made it so that it is more just relaxing and meditative art for me. But that is definitely sort of ther therapeutic for sure. Because like I said, I I just couldn't stop. Another question, and it's funny, cut and, and Nancy, thank you for that question. Um, Catherine, super glad you're here with us. Um, she happens to ask something that is so ironic. Have you ever done this with acrylic or other media? Ah. <laughs> I think that we were, so, um, Cheryl and I were just talking about this. So I have been doing the Sharpie marker once for about a year now, um, and I've been playing with it and exploring. And then just yesterday, I was like, hmm, 
I am running out of Sharpies in my house and I haven't gotten more ordered yet. So I actually went ahead and went down to my studio and pulled out some artwork that I had, some scraps that were left over from other projects. So I went ahead and this is a mixed media piece. And if you see it up close, there's some painting that was done in the background using some stencils. Oh, there we go. Um, and then I went ahead and just started doing the neurographic process over top of it. So it's very interesting that you should ask about doing it in a different medium because yesterday that's what I did all day long. I took some canvas panels that I had, um, that I had done a mixed media process on and started painting over top of them. But again, it's very relaxing still. Um, I did find out that you have to go smaller and smaller with your paintbrushes. Those first two I showed you, I used like a, a six round and a eight round and they were too thick. The lines were way too heavy. So then I went and I did one that had, um, I used a four round for my large lines and then a two round for my small lines. Um, took a lot longer too though, <laughs> but it, um, it gives you some amazing things. And again, I'm trying to hold it so that you can see the color on it. Okay, you're doing great. Yeah, so it's got like some greens and violets in the background and then it's got that nice bold black line on top. So I love, those, the, I love the mixed media part of that. So much. That's fun. what I normally do. That's my typical art look. So it was kind of nice to actually take this and incorporate it into what I traditionally do. It pushed my my own personal art to a new level. Yeah. Uh, now I'm looking forward to doing it and actually going back and painting within the shapes instead of just um, having the black line on there because I haven't done anything within the shape so far. Yep. So that'll be my um, next. I was telling step. Cheryl that I tried it with um, oil pastels. The black is the oil pastel. And then after I got it on there, and it was a little sketchy because you know how oil pastels get a little bit crumbly. But then I went back in with the watercolor, and it, it, for whatever reason, it just made it feel furry to me. So <laughs> I know furry, that's probably not a term art people use, but um, it reminded me a little bit of a bumblebee. Um, there is Sarah asked a really good question. Um, what would you suggest if you are stuck on either what pattern shapes to use or what colors might work well? Um, Cheryl, I'm going to let you answer that second because um, my, su my suggestion, Sarah, is just keep making. You know what? Make it until you find something that like Whoa! makes you super happy. Um, <laughs> Cheryl, how would you answer that? Uh, so yes, yeah, so you you can play around with shapes. Um, the beauty of it is, is that if you do something that you don't like, color it in, transform it, turn it into something else, and just keep going. Um, I have broken up shapes multiple times, like when I added in these little circles because I didn't like what I was doing on this one, so I added in some more circles to fill it in. Um, that's the big one for the lines and shapes, just kind of play. The other thing you could do, and I don't necessarily do it a lot, but you could also sketch it in in pencil first. If you're really unsure, sketch it in lightly in pencil, figure out if that's gonna work. If it does, great, go over it with the Sharpie. If not, erase it and try something else. Um, for color, what I will show you I do, and I do this with my students at school a lot, I actually make like little color swatches so I can just kind of take the colors that I'm thinking I might want to use and put them down and see, okay, I kind of like what this is doing. I also have a lot of experience with color theory. So I know which kind of color combinations go together and that's just something you have to do through trial and practice. But um, when all else fails, just make a color card and see if you like the colors together. If you find that you have one that you really like on there, great run with it if there's something that you're like mm, i don't know that that color works so well get rid of it no harm no foul this is your practice place so you could try that i love that she says she's a type a personality so it's real hard to dive right in i think i think your your statement where you said there's no rules made it acceptable to then like create based on your own set of rules. So, you know, make it your own. And I, when you were talking about 
um, changing a shape where you see those really dark shapes on this one that I did. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I had done something that I didn't like, so I, I darkened it and then it was unbalanced. So then I went in and darkened some others. But seriously, I couldn't stop. I just, and I found the ones that were super crazy busy that drove my husband really crazy were the ones that I really was loving to do. He kept saying, yeah, they're the same. And I'm like, no, look at this one. No, they're, they're all different. One. One, <laughs> they're, they're not the same. And, um, and the friends that have posted, and please everybody, if you are making, um, please post your art on the NASCO um, Facebook page, NASCO Art Education. Um, post it on our Facebook page or NASCO Arts on Instagram. We would love to see it. If you want to send it to me at um, kbaki at nascoeducation.com, you can do that too. Um, you can, I, I love the fact that it's, you can make it tiny. Like you can just do little tiny ones. I was on every time I was on a Zoom meeting or, you know, a conference call, which are a lot, I sit, a lot of times I'll be just sketching. Um, so it is so just relaxing. And, and it's amazing how fast time goes when you are doing this. <clears throat> um, Most definitely. I'm looking to see, um, some um, also, are there any good names or links of us that love to research how to do things? I'm sorry, what was that one? I didn't hear that. Any any um, like names to Google? Actually, I know if you just type in neurographic art, a yes. whole lot of stuff comes up. Um, I after watching Cheryl, I looked it up on like YouTube and I Googled it, and a whole bunch of information comes up. Yes. And for those who did join in late, um, absolutely, there's going to be a recorded version of this. It takes, I think, about a week to get posted on our NASCO Educate site. And if you have not been to that site, um, NASCO Educate is a K to career resource center for teachers. There is some paid content on there, but there is tons of free resources. You um, start by um, requesting an account, which is completely free. And there's an actual um, whole visual arts resource center on there that you click on. A lot of the um, NASCO, free NASCO lesson plans are on there. You can click on and enjoy that I'm doing this sign for click. Um, you can click on the um, PD and webinar section and it will show upcoming PD and webinar. And then it will also show you recorded stuff. So you may have to wait a few days, maybe a week for this to get on there, but yes, you will be able to watch it in full. Um, Cheryl, do you do this with your high schoolers? I do. Um, I've only done it once because I just discovered it within the last year, but I did do it with some of my upper level students. Um, I used it as an exercise and to intro them to playing with line and taking it like what we call for a walk um, to get them out of the idea of everything having to be a rigid realistic hard edge type drawing so and then it's also a good way for them to learn that a marker can do so much more than just color in a solid shape which is what they're used to with it and it's funny because in my classroom i use crayola markers um, and everybody's like, oh, well, do they work? Yes, Crayola work, markers work beautifully to turn into a watercolor marker. Yeah. I just happen to not have any Crayola markers at home. So I had to go with what I had. I have my nice um, Stadler Tri Plus tips and they have nice bright, bold colors and they work really well to blend out. But um, so yes, and I have done it with my students. brush is the brush where you can put the water in it, right? Yep. Yes. Yeah, so yep. you just Royal Brush just, makes one called Aquaflow. Yep. Yes. So I loved the tiny Sharpie idea. Um, I missed that the first time around. And so often, often my lines are super thick because I hate it if there's just a little edge. And so I tend to round out my edge, which makes my lines a little bit thicker. See, Sarah, yeah. I'm kind of a rule follower too, but you know do what you want, it works, right. it makes you happy. 
I um, actually I actually end up with quite a bit of the heavier line also, just because I'm the same way. I like to really make sure that my lines are smooth. And in order to do that, sometimes I have to go back over quite a few times. So another question um, Catherine said was you could collage like all the little pieces together. I think that's super good idea. That would be a great um, like a collaborative thing. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever, well, you've done, after the acrylic thing, you clearly have done some mixed media with it. Have you ever collaged? I was thinking it would be kind of fun to take the large spaces and maybe collage in um, like words from a book or magazine pictures or something like that. That was something that I was going to try, but I've been just clearly occupied with drawing right. and watercoloring. I'm the same way. I've been playing so much with just making the actual designs. And it's funny because I go through phases where sometimes I want to start a drawing from beginning to end. I want to do the black line. I want to go right in and do the color. Sometimes to the point I'm pulling out the hair dryer to get the paint dry so that I can go ahead and draw on top of it. And then there are other days where all I want is the meditation part of it. So that's yes. the black line work for me. And so I will go through and just create, create, create. Um, and keep making like here's one though that's really nice because you can see the difference between the heavy line and the thin line yes, um, I love that. where traditionally mine get more like this where I have a lot of the thicker lines and I like those big bold intersections yes. that are those soft spots to land your eye but um yeah so I will spend days just playing with the lines and really trying to see what I can do with it um, this one, when I started it, I was like, I want something that looks like a flame. So oh. if you look at it, I see the flame in it here. So it's hard to do this backwards. <laughs> but yep, there's my big flame right there. And I was like, oh, I'm going to color it in. And then I got it like this and I love it so much. I'm like, I'm not ready to color it in yet because I like it just like it is. I might make a copy of it at some point because the beauty of it is, especially in the black and white line design, you can take them, photograph them, throw them into your computer, print them out on paper. Like my plan is I'm gonna take some of my designs. Um, I have a friend that works at a nursing home and is asking for people to send cards to patients there because they're isolated right now because of everything that's happening with the COVID-19. And um, so I'm gonna take some of my black line designs, print them onto cards and send them with a nice little note inside telling the people, hey, feel free to take something and color the front and make the design your own. Um, I think it'll be a great way to oh, use my so art. Much. That is the heart of an art teacher for sure. And I love that. I love, I love it for the collaboration part of it, but also for the community part of it. That is beautiful. Look for your one that you did the white gel pen on. Somebody um, is, I think, Tara is asking, can you please hold that up? It's gorgeous. I totally agree. And also um, another question is, is there Sharpies that don't have the smell? Um, I don't know of a low odor Sharpie. There might be, um, but there are low odor markers out there that you can look for. They tend to be a little bit more expensive, but if that's important to you, there are some low odor markers that would most likely work. The other thing I will say is I have also tried, um, I have Posca pens, which are the acrylic paint pens. I've yeah. used those to do some of the designs on top as well. So you could use those too, because the white lines on this one are actually Posca pen. How about, yeah. have you ever used the um, alcohol-based pens like a Copic or um, I think Royal Brush, Brush makes um, one as well? I have not, um, only because I have never, what's really funny is I have never been a marker person. Um, it's not been one of my go-to mediums. So I played really with what I had here at the house. So I had Sharpies and um, I love the Sharpies because they keep that nice clean line. They don't react to any water-based medium that you might put over top of it. But um, I have not played with the Copics. If you um, look sort of right above my head, right there, <laughs> there, <laughs> there 
Um, <laughs> that one is one that I just did some long lines and a couple intersections. And then I thought it would be fun to just play with color. I did all of that with Mr. Sketch. Um, the interesting thing though, is when two colors intersected, it made the little connecting point where you soften the um, corners. Um, a little sketchy looking, no pun intended, um, <laughs> but it still was cool. It ended up looking um, a little bit like, like Google Maps or something. Again, <laughs> no harm done. I think that's the. I think that's a, a bonus that I have as as being an art student versus an art teacher or a, a you know a professional artist is that yeah. What, what's the harm done? Might as well just play and enjoy. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you can tell somebody yeah, but it wasn't that good. Right. Um, Same thing I tell my kids. What's the worst thing that happens? It doesn't work. No harm, no foul. Right. And yeah, keep keep using paper because we love that you buy paper. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm looking to see if I'm missing any questions. Uh, Cheryl, you are you doing this at a future NAEA workshop? Um, I have not put in for an NAEA workshop. I have been encouraged to, so I think I may. Um, I am going to do it again this fall at our Virginia Art Education Workshop. Um, everybody who did it off the VAEA member page was like, you need to do this at conference. And I'm the conference chair, so I will give them what they want and I will go ahead and present <laughs> it at the Art Education Association this fall for Virginia. Um, and I may just send it in for NAEA to share it there because I know I've gotten a lot of feedback from people who are not from Virginia art educators. I have friends that are not artists, don't consider themselves artists at all, who join the Friday night events now regularly and have gotten hooked on this. This one is probably one of the most accessible lessons I've ever given where everybody at every skill level, any, type of materials like it's so open-ended there is no wrong way to do it and um it's amazing when i've done the friday night event some of the people um one of our teachers here in virginia actually had her husband and both of her kids doing it along with them so at the end i got a photograph of the four of them all holding their wow. images and i was like that's awesome they turned it into a whole friday night event I will tell you, you asked me if I've done this with my kids. I did actually just upload my PowerPoint that I created on it for my kids this week as their um, enrichment project on our school-based website. So it's out there. So I'm gonna actually see if they use it and if they get the same reaction to it. Cause of course, when they do artwork for class, they have to do an artist statement with it and explain yep. you know, what they were thinking while they were creating and how it worked for them. But um, It'll be interesting to see what I get back from them. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Paula says, um, no question, but she just agrees that it's so therapeutic. Um, I love um, curving the intersections. I do too. I find yes. it to be um, just super satisfying. So she says, it so is. much fun, thank you. Um, and Tara also says the activity would be great to do with music playing in the background. For sure it is. I totally yes. was doing that on a little um, Spotify playlist that I had that I was enjoying, which might explain why mine looked very 1970s. Um, <laughs> also, too, at the very beginning of the, I think it was the Friday Night Forum one that you did, you talked about sometimes having like a, a mantra or a thought or something that you focus on while you do it that's another yes. another great way to make it a little bit more mindful um you know a lot of social emotional learning is happening right now and being incorporated in the class this is an excellent mindful exercise yes i will say in addition to music when you're doing it i also listen to my audio books so um it's a good way to listen to my audio book and not get distracted. And so I'm able to focus and really listen to what's being said and still create at the same time. That would be interesting to try to guess what um, 
genre of book you're listening to with the to match it to the um, piece of artwork. That would be interesting. I should make notes of which ones will go with which paintings. So much fun. Another <laughs> thing that you said um, reminded me when you talked about the family that did it. I know that sometimes um, it, in school when you guys do like staff um, in service and things like that, sometimes they ask for some sort of activity. It'd be fabulous to do that with the entire staff of the school. I see um, math teachers digging it because of the idea of shape and pattern and some of that kind of stuff. Um, the organic shape where you're going to actually start with, you know, an actual square with, you know, angles and then you round those out. But the science part of it, like the one that you did that had to do with the DNA, yeah. like how much fun would it be to like replicate, so try to replicate like stuff that you see. This is my Petri dish, by the way. Do you love that? <laughs> um, replicate what you're looking in in a microscope. I think that would right. be really cool. Yeah, there's uh, lots of possibilities for cross-curricular tie-ins with this one. And if even with the math, thinking about like if you're plotting and graphing and having to incorporate those into the lines that you're drawing, that could be very interesting. Absolutely. The technique reminds me of Lee Bontaku sculpture. And Marguerite, I'm not familiar with Lee, um, but that gives us all a little bit of a homework assignment. Um, and the fact that it's a sculpture, that's kind of a cool thing, too. Hmm. Um, oh, I know Holly. I've been told um, that it reminds people of de Kooning's late work. And I had to go and look it up because I, I think of de Kooning in his early days of the very abstract expressionist. And then um, at the end of his career, he had gotten much more into a controlled line and they actually do feel similar to this. So it was good for me. I got to go on a learning expedition of my own. And I enjoy how you can um, take this and match it to different artists. I think that's just another adding that art history element to it. Holly says um, translucent paper would be a neat ad adaptation for collage and layering. Totally agree because you could have, you could continue to add and build and also too, it'd be kind of cool just in a practice sort of way. You do your translucent one and put it on top of something. And if you decide you don't like it, you don't have to do it. You know, you could be like, oh, I really like that. I'm going to add that actual. It, it's almost like practice. Oh, you guys just inspired me. Now I have a new, a new challenge for myself. I do bookmaking. And I'm thinking how this could be used to make like, um, oh, it's escaping me right now. But the tunnel books where you look through layer by layer. Oh, oh yeah. I just got a new project. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I think all of us got new projects just by being introduced to this. I am just there are so many sure possibilities. Do not miss a question. So what are the Friday night that I events that I'm referring to? Leslie, um, Virginia Art Education Association has a um, public Facebook page and I spilled the beans on it on a previous webinar. And then I had to go to the administrator and say, is that okay that I shouted you guys out? She said, oh, it's public. Absolutely. They, yes. have, they have other people, not only from Virginia, but Wisconsin and all across the United States join in. Um, so it's V-A-E-A -A Forum. Members Forum. Oh, say that members members forum yes. and so yeah, you yeah, can yeah. just like the page and then friday night at seven o'clock eastern time and i say that because i'm central time so at one point i thought i could go for a jog and come back and be all ready and i got back and i'm like i forgot it's eastern time so i did the friday night forum real sweaty but that was probably too much information anywho um so it's seven o'clock Eastern time. Yes. I think this, um, oh yeah, this Friday, somebody's going to be doing a, a homemade scratch art kind of thing, which will be super cool. They've done collaging. In fact, I invited another guest for next week, Beth Allums, to do some paper collaging. Yes, it's from just Richmond. so much fun because there's so many ideas out there that connect. 
And so it's neat to have something that connects that you can do at an elementary level and take it all the way to an adult level, a high school level. So mm -hmm. that is the Friday night um, events that I'm talking about from Virginia Art Ed. Um, yes, please feel free to join us. It's open to everyone. Oh yeah, and just so much fun. And I enjoy all the comments that are happening. I Yeah, it's a great learning experience. And it's amazing how fast an hour goes by. In fact, it our is. hour is going by pretty quickly here too. Um, I think we've hit all the questions. So uh, if you have any more, feel free to um, comment before we end the session, or you can send your comments to um, me. I'm at kbahi at nascoeducation.com. Check out NASCO Educate. If you would like an account, you can just click on set up an account and it takes about 24 hours to get you a username and password. Cheryl, this has been so much fun and I can't thank you enough for sharing this technique with us, um, sharing your art with us and your time you are, and your great idea about the nursing home. You have um, definitely made this Monday very less manic. So thank you very, very much for that. Thank you. It's been my pleasure to be here and share this fun art form with everybody. Well, you are terrific. Please come back on Wednesday because ironically this week, um, the Wednesday um, live art webinar is going to be line design into sculpture. So we're going to continue on a line um, thought process. And um, I am going to have the wonderfully um, wild and wacky Debbie West, who I absolutely adore. Um, and just to give you a little bit of a, a hint, Debbie's going to help us do, um, we're going to talk about the line design and the project guide that goes with it for students. And then from there, Debbie's going to talk a little bit about um, line design and design in general with hands. So just to close down um, for the day, I decided while I was talking to Debbie and we were planning that out to take the hand idea and mix it with Cheryl's idea to say, come back Wednesday for line design into sculpture. But this is my, um, this is my neurographic art in a hand and I'm a big fan of peace and love. So that's my peace sign. So please come back and join us. Um, be well, be safe, and keep teaching art. And thanks again, Cheryl. My pleasure. Have a great day. You too.